So this setup I specifically came up with for my friend Nadia, who wants to get into wedding videography. And then in a couple of days, she's gonna be running with the crew as an operator for B-roll. So basically she's gonna stay on the outside, filming in, picking up as much as she can. And obviously they wanna know what she can do with the camera. So specifically for this use case, I came up with this setup. It's got good external audio, an articulating field monitor, good handling, a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, well thought out cable management, and one or two tricks up its sleeve. So I think she's gonna do real well with this setup. Let's build it. This setup is built around a Sony a7 III that I accessorized with a dark camo skin that I think looks pretty awesome. First thing we're gonna do is hook up a cage to that camera. And I'm going to use this Ulancy or Uuric cage made especially for the Sony a7 III. I already hooked up my Peak Design camera strap hooks. So this is what? This is right here. The cold shoe right here is at an angle. Why? This is important and useful. I'm gonna show you later. It also comes with a built-in quick release plate so you can hook it up to your standard Arca Swiss sized ball heads without attaching an additional plate. And something I really like with cages, it has a tiny little screw right here that further secures the camera body to the cage so it doesn't move inside around at all. Camera goes in the cage, the bottom screw first. So right here it uses the a7 III's own camera strap hook to further secure the camera to the cage. Don't completely tighten it. Now finalize this mounting point right here. Make sure it's a secure fit. And then finalize the one right here. I mean, the camera ain't moving in this cage one freaking bit. Let's continue to prepare the cage for some accessories I'm gonna hook up later. First thing to do here is use this tilter NATO rail and attach it to the left side of the cage because this is where we're gonna hook up this grip. And we're gonna attach it on the left side of the cage as far up as possible. Again, <clears throat> Apply some force here, make sure it ain't moving. Next up is another ingenious product by Ulancy or Uuric, and it's this cable clamp of which we're gonna use too. It's a super simple and sometimes a bit difficult to apply, but ultimately very secure dual cable clamp for a thick or relatively thick and a relatively thin cable. And the first one goes on the cage right here. Then, as far as the grip is concerned, I'm going with this tilter grip because it looks super nice and it has one thing that I really, really need for this setup, which is a quarter inch mount on the top because this is where the second little Ulancy cable clamp goes. Just screw it in and tighten it lightly. Now, as a mic, to get better ambient audio, I'm using a Comica CVM VM20. Quality wise, it's on the same level as the old VideoMic Pro. Not the VideoMic Pro Plus, but the old VideoMic Pro. It has a built in USB C chargeable battery, and battery life is upwards of 15 hours. So it's definitely good for a day. It has two options of low cut filters 75 and, let me check, 150 Hz. You turn it on right here, and it shows you the battery status on a little display. It has a plus 10 decibel pre-gain built in that you can reduce seamlessly from one all the way up to 10. So it'll work really, really well with the preamps of the a7 III. Oh, and also obviously it comes with its own foam wind muff that currently you can't see because the proprietary fur wind muff is on top of it. Overall, very good wind protection. It's really one of my favorite on-camera shotgun mics. Slide it in and close it down. And there we go. This is how it sits on the camera. For the time being, I'm turning it off. Now, obviously, this right here is cable management and we're gonna take care of that later. Next up, monitor. Fieldworld F5 Pro. Small 5.5 inch screen diagonal on camera field monitor. Not looking to expand the capabilities of my a7 III, just looking for a decent full HD panel that takes 4K signals and doesn't bulk up the whole setup. And the F5 Pro is perfect. It has all the quarter inch connections that I need. 
and it runs off of a simple NPF Sony battery. On top of that, you can monitor audio if you output the playback signal to the monitor, which this setup can do, and you can run the whole camera, given you have the right dummy battery, off the monitor's NPF battery. So in my book, this is a perfect fit for this setup. Usually I'm in favor of NATO rails, but since this is kind of a scrap part setup, I'm going for this tiny magic arm. Single quarter inch mount, single quarter inch mount clamp mechanism. There's others, but especially this clamp mechanism works really, really well. Another benefit, if you were to use a standard QR plate on this monitor, unfortunately, most QR plates would block the headphone monitoring output. Now, the other part attaches to the cage right there, so a little off-center. But that's no problem, given that this is a super versatile little magic arm. Again, usually I really prefer a NATO rail uh, quick release setup, but I have to say, being able to articulate the screen in a lot of different positions relatively quickly is pretty cool. And because the mechanism is quite good, it is actually a pretty secure mount, although we're just using one quarter inch screw per side. Pretty cool little setup, but of course not done yet. Next up, the lens. And given the particular use case of this setup, I say the 70 to 200 F4 from Sony is the perfect fit. It has very good optical quality and it has excellent stabilization. So you can definitely use it handheld even at 200. Also, it's smaller and a bit more lightweight than its F2.8 brother. Now F4 is not a problem because she specifically wants to stay on the outside, filming in, getting some B-roll and of people mostly. So from 70, 100, and when it goes to 200 millimeters, an F2.8 gives you not enough depth of field, especially quarter profiles like shoulder to tip of the nose uh, depth of field. You're not gonna use an F2.8 above 70 millimeters anyway. In all likelihood, she's gonna have to use a higher F-stop than that most of the time, like shooting an F8 with uh, such scenarios in such situations is not all that unheard of. Good thing though, that you can push the ISO with a camera like the Sony a7 III. So for all these reasons, I think it's a perfect fit for what she's trying to do. Even an F4 might give you too much light. So we're gonna use an ND filter. The lens can't be bigger than 72 millimeters, which is exactly the front filter thread of the 70 to 200 f4 and the filter this takes has to have an 82 millimeter diameter. This screws in right here, make sure it sits right and then finally tighten it, close it and attach your variable ND. And in our case, this is really my favorite one, it's the Tiffin to the 8 stop variable ND. So 82 millimeter thread fits right here and again Ulancy or Uuric gave us a super cool piece of gear. So if you don't need the filter you just keep it like that. If you realize you need to kill light there you go. And especially for weddings where timing is of the essence, where you need to be in the right spot at the right time with the camera ready to shoot the image you can only get there and then, this is perfect. This is like truly a piece of gear that is built for wedding videography. There we go. Already looks pretty damn cool. Shooting this handheld is also quite comfortable already. But since I'm right-handed, I could stop right here. But she's left-handed, so I can't. Let's hook up the quick release plate. And there we go. Now, before we can put the grip on, cable management comes into play. So this is where the mic goes, and it's got an angled connector. I'm gonna put it in like this, and use this cold shoe mount right here to run the cable run it under the mini magic arm and then come over here. And this is where we're gonna use the cable clamp 
to lock it in place. Let's make sure, because the cable is rather thin, we're using this part of the cable clamp that is made to hold a rather thin cable. Let's run the cable through the clamp like this and then attach it, because otherwise it's too fiddly of an affair. And there we go. Cable clamp now secures microphone cable. Hook it up to the mic and first part of cable management done. Now we can attach the grip. And it has a simple NATO rail clamp mechanism right here. And then use the clamp to finalize the position. There we go. Grip installed. So for example, we can move or pan just using the torso and keep the elbows locked in, which makes it a pretty stable pan. Let's hook up the cable for the monitor. And we're gonna use a right angled micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable. Full size HDMI hooks up to the monitor. Then this cable clamp on the grip secures the cable. You run the cable between the grip and the lens in the front, come back and run it in between the grip and the cage again. So it finally hooks up to the camera input. And it's basically out of the way. You can still use the grip. This thing being right angled is very, very important because otherwise this is going to point up and that's not something that we want. If it's not angled, you can't use the grip because this thing blocks your hand. So right angled micro HDMI is a must for this setup. Now, last but not least, power supply for the camera. I'm using an FC100 dummy battery that has a male DC plug that will hook up to the monitor's DC output. First of all, I'm using a Sony NPF battery. This one is a 750. It has the best relation between size, weight, and capacity, in my opinion. This thing will power the whole setup. So let's attach it to the monitor real quick before we hook up the dummy battery. Goes right here, clicks in, there we go. Dummy battery obviously sits where the regular battery would sit. There's a little door allowing for the dummy battery cable to exit the battery compartment. Then run the cable on the bottom, run it between the grip and the cage. Cable comes up here, runs this way, is secured via the second part of the cable clamp, and then attaches to the monitor's DC output right there. And now the whole setup can be powered via one NPF battery on the monitor. Once again, if you don't need the ND filter, you just keep it like that. If you need to readjust the position of the screen, since you're using a mini magic arm, you can just open it and adjust it every which way you like, almost. I like it pretty close to the setup to keep the whole setup compact. You're getting decent, high quality ambient audio via this Comica CVM VM20 mic that would also conflict with the position of the monitor were it not for the slightly angled hot shoe mount, sorry, cold shoe mount on the Ulancy grip, which makes it perfect because it sits further out. Then of course, now being left-handed, she can use her strong hand to guide the camera using the tilter grip and have her right hand right here or on the camera grip. That's it for this setup, Nadia's setup. Um, let me know what you think about the setup, maybe what you would do differently, what you would improve on, or, well, really any thoughts pertaining to this setup, especially the Ulancy parts, allowing this quick um, adjustment for the variable ND, giving us these excellent tiny cable clamps, and overall, of course, the very good cage for the A7 III makes this a setup I'm rather proud of. That's it for this video. If you liked it, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome, and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used is linked in the description. And because I actually liked this setup better than I thought I would, I'm going to create a kit on kit.co containing all the parts 
all the descriptions so you know exactly what I've been using to create this setup and you know exactly where everything goes and what you might or might not need. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.